Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with the Limp, and I'm here with another Kickstarter worth checking out. This one is The Dark Quarter by Lucky Duck Games. <laughs> I love that name, I gotta say it. Lucky Duck Games. Now, this one is one that is similar to one that I've covered before. It's not a war game, a little off topic. Uh, one of those more RPG storytelling type games that I do really enjoy. And this one has a uh, much more thematic, much more, it's more about telling a story, right? Telling a good story. And the first one that I covered by these people was called Destinies. And one of the things I really loved about that game was the amount of game and the quality of game, especially quality of components that you got for the price that you paid. I'm definitely telling you, if you haven't got it and you enjoy this uh, style of game, by all means, go pick it up. You can find it, and it does not cost too much, and it is an excellent game. Replay value is a little lacking because there is an app component to this. So once you've played through a story, you do kind of know what to expect. But just the sheer amount, the fact that you can get uh, expansions, there are expansions for the games, uh, the fact that they do have the ability to expand it with the app without having to have physical components. Now, I don't think they've gone that route yet, but they can, is awesome. Uh, so this one's similar to it, d uh, much different theme. Destinies was more swords, boards, spells, uh, that type stuff. This one gives a Lovecraftian feel set in New Orleans. All right, so just like we always do, we'll start with the video. As you guys can see here, it is already funded. Thousands of backers. We know this one's going to fund. We know this one's going to get into people's hands. They have a very successful track record. Uh, but I did stumble across it a couple of days ago. I wanted to pop a quick video up about it to show people. You do have a couple weeks left, and I love it when a company does this, when they have enough time just in case uh, you haven't had hit your payday yet. And you don't want to have a Kickstarter that only gives you a week to back it. So let's pop up here, start the video, let you guys watch that, and then we'll show you the rest of it. It was the hottest summer on record. Humidity coated the city like a mass of rats and honey. If ever the city owned up to its ancient nickname, the wet grave, it was in the summer of 81. The murder was brutal and archaic. The victim, Frank Fusso, was powerful and important. A call was placed for outside help. The NOPD wasn't above begging. The Beaumont Agency was asked for soul, and that's how we got wrapped up in this mess. The freshly baked evidence file was kind of thin, not much to chew on, but we had some leads. We scoured the city and see what we could dig up. I started at Laveau Corp. They always seem to be at the center of politics, crime, and even magic. Getting past the receptionist was a breeze, but their CEO, Charlotte Batten, was a different story. She wouldn't give me any details at first, but I pressed on her a little, and she snapped. I left her to cool off. I had something that was bugging me, something personal. The killing had similarities to Maria's murder. Breaking on the wheel was an 18th century manner of execution. This had to be a pattern. I needed to return to our home. Maybe I missed something, some connection. As I walked into the house, some thug jumped me. He got me good at first, but thankfully, I had some extra help. Those Laveau suits would need to try harder to get me off this case. Something bigger was going on, something we weren't meant to be digging into. This hired goon, those dead Saturday scumbags, the fanatics of the Inquisition, hell, even the bloody casket girl for showing an interest in the case. And now, dark magic was starting to appear, ritualistic and sinister. How could we stand up against the very lower of death, let alone the monstrosities lurking in the shadows? <laughs> There was so much more to this case than we ever imagined. All right, so that gives you just a brief taste. You can see it's very thematic. It has a whole lot of story to it. And 
uh, like I said, very similar to Destiny's. You saw different types of dice being rolled, and we'll scroll down and let you guys see what that's going on. But you saw a tablet, a phone, something's going to be required for play. If you don't like that, you're going to have to give this one up. I love having that electronic component into my games, so it does not bother me. To me, that's a plus. All right, so the levels, as usual, uh, as you guys can see, I have backed this game. Definitely one that I want to get. And there's different levels that you can back it at. And it looks like they're not showing... Oh, it's showing my backing. It's like it's not showing the lower levels. Uh, One dollar or more, pledge manager, uh, manager access. If you just want to get into the comments or if you want to fully back it later. I always love it when a company does that. Just in case you can't back it now, you don't have the money, whatever. It gives you a chance to pick it up later. Uh, about $65, you can get the Rookie which is the base game and the free expansion plus stretch goals, that type of stuff. And then the other one here is shown is the whole damn agency. That's the all in, which is plastic tokens, uh, metal coins, all the stretch goals, the free expansion that I mentioned, and then another expansion plus the extra minis. All right, so the way I went was my pledge is about 100 and it's basically all the game. I didn't pay for the extra minis because yeah, I don't really need them. If you want all the cool stuff, all the extra bonuses like plastic tokens instead of cardboard tokens and metal coins and extra minis, go with all in. If not, you can get all the story content for 100 All right, so you see this is basically what the base game comes with and the first game destinies had cards instead of these types so you see here it shows a big main map and then a bunch of smaller locations that show the individual places that you went the other one had just a bunch of individual cards that all lined together to lay out a landscape there in front of you as you revealed it and flipped the tiles to show what was there. And then tokens were used to show points of interest or characters that you can interact with. If you do get the miniatures expansion, a lot of those tokens do get replaced with minis. Again, that's personal preference to you on what you want to go with. So the big overall map is new. I like that. They, they took what worked and they expanded it with more ideas. So let's scroll down and let you guys see what all it comes with. Uh, this is the, the base game and then the free exclusive uh, expansion. The bonuses here are the plastic tokens and stuff like that. Again, not needed, but a nice addition to have. And our characters see a cinematic experience, which I got to say, as far as storytelling goes, it does an excellent job. Now, I'm basing this off my experience with Destinies, which I really did love. And as you guys can see, all the cards have these little QR codes on them so they can be scanned in and the game keeps track of what items you have received. So it's just an extra way to save the game, but it gives the app the ability to interact with you. Uh, certain cards will give you bonuses uh, during your test, which that's what you're rolling your dice for. You guys will see as we go down. Here, developing your character. I'm assuming this is gonna be very similar to the previous one. Uh, previously, you had three stats, which was basically like strength, dexter uh, dexterity, and intelligence, so magic. Here, it looks like four stats. I'm sure it's some type of martial prowess, occult, arcane, whatever, since it does have that Lovecraftian feel. But the way it works is these little cubes that are on your player board, they will mark out certain numbers on the player board, and when you roll your dice whatever the dice total up to be, any cube equal to or under that number counts as a success. And then you program into your tablet or phone however many successes you got. So if you have two cubes, six or under, you got two successes. And then some of the dice will give you bonus successes that you get to add in as well. And depending on how well you do, you can either fail or marginally succeed or really succeed at a task. I love how they have that. 
you see how it's a hybrid has the electronic components that way you can decide what choices you're going to make some of your characters will be better at fighting some of your characters will be better at exploring uh it's kind of like an rpg a a dungeon crawling rpg meets uh mansions of madness second edition is a good way to to go with it uh, these are the cards I was talking about with the QR codes. See this, add three to your dice roll result for any, I'm assuming the red means strength test is what the crowbar does. So these cards all give you little boons and bonuses that you get to use. Love how that works with this game. Create your own scenarios is new. This is what I was talking about, the fact that the game is expansive. And this looks like it's going to be even more expansive uh, than Destiny's was. Destiny's had its main game and then an expansion for it. This looks like it's going to have the ability for basically mod content like you would have from a video game. Tell me that is not awesome. Users creating their own scenarios that you already have uh, all the components for. This means the game is almost infinite in what can be created with the community just having full access to it. Imagine how many games you love out there, uh, video games I mean, that have blown up into some other genre, like uh, Defense of the Ancients, right? Dota was created originally as a mod and it created its own experience. We could have a similar thing now with board game companies being able to give modding to their community. That's just going to give our games even more replayability. I love how they've added that in here to this game. Really excited to see how it plays out. Uh, here we can see our characters. Uh, looks like a private eye type character. Now all the main characters and main bosses you get minis for in the box. The rest of the like side characters are the ones that you're going to have uh, to pay extra for those minis. The big dice are like the character's main die and then these smaller white ones over here to the side are the die that you get added per turn or for bonuses that allow you to roll higher during your tests. It looks like in this as well they're adding character specific colored tokens. My guess is that it shows that character completed a certain point of interest or an attack on a enemy, whatever the case is, and then also cards that are specific to that character and we have miss julia paris she's got red colors for her dice and board we have constance morale oh i love that kind of like a mage look going for uh flames pouring from her hand really love that many that looks like it'll be a fun one to paint and <laughs> fat bum looking guy over here winter mullins <laughs> definitely looks cool like that and there is the expansion as well this is the main city board that i was talking about uh that is new this wasn't done in the previous game i'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out location tiles are going to be similar to the cards would be my assumption that we had in the previous game so this is like what we had before and this is some new type stuff uh crime scenes totally have no idea how that's going to play out really looking forward to it tokens for all the minor characters uh, again they had mini uh, miniatures for some of those in destinies and it looks like you will have to pay if you want miniatures for those in this game not a requirement it's totally up to you if you want the minis or not uh, location markers are what i was talking about that mark out things like points of interest uh, we have experience tokens five times and then just single experience tokens because you can level your characters up and move those cubes across your player board, which will mean that you have an easier chance to gain more successes at your test. You, you're leveling up. Our cubes, okay, here it shows our four uh, stats. We have charisma, talent, just whatever talent is, arcane, and combat. So what you would expect from something that's Lovecraftian. Whole slew of cards, uh, 64 consumable cards, 34 story cards. Miniatures, we've got the Cursed Werewolf, Baron Samidi, Dark Priestess, and the Executioner. Oh, okay, the Executioner looks freaking awesome, man. And so does the Baron, actually. Actually, all the minis look just phenomenal. I gotta say, they're, they're really knocking it out of the park. They'll be fun to paint. Four feature-length scenarios, over 1,000 words of narrative to explore, or 100,000, rather, of narrative to explore. And that's just the base game. 
right? So we do have the, I think this is the free expansion. Is it the, yeah, for free with every purchase, the Yesterday Demon and Other Stories. Uh, takes place before the offense depicted in the Dark Quarter and features four all-new standalone scenarios, each highlighting a single, single Beaumont agent and their inevitable tragic past. So we have eight full scenarios that come with the main game, possibly more. And that's before we talk about the extra expansion you can get as well. And then these are a lot of the stretch goals that can be added, which are going to be locations, cards, looks like another bad guy, a demonic Luca NPC mini. Okay, this token doesn't match this mini, I don't believe. So I'm not sure if they go together. Plus one feature link scenario. Cool. I like that too. Uh, we the Damned. Is this another? I believe this is another expansion. Or it might be. No, this looks like more unlocks. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are just unlocks. It looks like it's going to be another full link scenario. So it looks like we're up to at least about 10 uh, scenarios that are coming with it. Social stretch goals. Double layered player boards. We already knew that was going to be a thing. That's already been unlocked. Like I said, the components... They really knocked out of the park. Now, this is more expensive than Destiny's, but there's a lot more content in this one than the previous one. Here, uh, you can read more about the game in the Kickstarter page. I'm not going to read through all this, uh, but they've gone to a lot of trouble to put a whole lot of lore, backstories, different factions who are involved in the game. And this one is the extra expansion that you can get if you get all the story stuff all right so if you get the all-in pledge or the the pledge that i got then you get this one as well and it's called lost to the night and comes with basically almost as much as the the main game we've got i think four other yeah four other main characters and then some uh some more content let's see 30 location tiles three more scene tiles Jane, the Blue Jay, Tien, Tien, Ten. I'm not sure exactly how to say that. The Sista and Fat Rambo here. <laughs> Hector Salvaleta, red guy. He'll be like the combat guy. This is the one I saw earlier. I really like him because he looks like a, a cool version of like a Gand, uh, not Gandalf. Uh, oh crap, Gambit, Gambit. That's the one I'm thinking of, Gambit. Really like him. And then Evelyn Dansky. So we got four other agents, Beaumont agents, that you can choose to play as as well. And then, of course, tokens, cards, a uh, few extra minis, the main characters, and then another main monster uh, to fight against. And this says it's got three feature link scenarios. So what are we up to? We're up to like 13, 14 scenarios, all the whole told like gaming content that you can get looking somewhere around 13 or 14 depending on how all the stretch goals pan out story content plus the ability for modders to add stuff to it so that's awesome again this shows your pledge levels just to show you what you're going to get 59 dollars was about 65 bucks you get the main game and then the free expansion and then this again is the level i got because it's the main game, free expansion, and then the extra expansion. So all story content and then the all in, which there's no point if you're going to get any of these add-ons down here that you get the add-on, like get the miniatures and not worry about getting the rest. Because by the time you add the miniatures, like 25 extra on top of the other one, you're almost the cost of this. So you might as well either go all in or not for all the content that you're going to get, uh, which is again, just the extra minis for all the, the side characters, metal tokens and the plastic tokens, which it's really just a, a quality of life thing up to you if you need it or not. And down here, it shows you what you're going to get as far as all those minis, deluxe metal tokens, all that good stuff. And they've got a lot of previews. This is one of the things where I kind of regret that I'm not bigger than I am. But I don't cover enough of these games. I understand they're not going to send it to me because I'm small. I mainly cover war games, but I love these storytelling games. I've always really been into them. Plenty of uh, videos. Make sure you go check them out. 
that show the gameplay. I'm hoping these people are showing the, the game in action without spoiling it too much. Uh, but like I said, you can go check out my video where I showed you Destinies. Destinies is going to be very similar to this. So if you like what you see with Destinies, you'll definitely like this, especially if you're into that Lovecraftian uh, monster lore scene. So anyway, that is The Dark Quarter by Lucky Dog Games and Van Ryder uh, Games as well. Make sure you guys check it out if you're at all interested. I can guarantee you I think you'll like this one if you like what you saw with Destinies. Again, if you don't like games that have a, 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 an app, that type of component, electronic component to it, skip it because it's integral. It has to be used for the game. But if you do like that, you do like you know making your choices, leveling your character, seeing how a story progresses out in front of you, right? So if you're into uh, Seventh Continent, you're into Destinies, you're into Sleeping Gods, those types of games, this is one you definitely need to give a give a look at because it looks like it's going to be awesome. All right, but that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one.